Notre Dame is number one. Notre Dame with a miracle win is a He's clock going clock. again. Notre Dame is scored. Tradition, as Rick Meyer and his fellow Fighting Irish know, it's usually on the side of Notre Dame, especially in the Cotton Bowl. But despite the legendary feats of legendary players, there were still lingering memories of the 1988 defeat in Dallas. We came down here in 87 with a group of guys that were totally committed to winning the game. It's a one-game season. You don't have a mulligan. You don't get to play it the next week. This is something you're going to live with all year. I read and I hear all this stuff about Notre Dame maybe doesn't belong in this level. That's nonsense. I want to be the best football team in that stadium. Bowl weeks traditionally are a mixture of football, fun, and fanfare. Notre Dame's trip to Dallas was no exception, as the Irish mixed in luncheons and dinners with their practice agenda. At the kickoff luncheon two days before the game, Lou Holtz didn't miss an opportunity to let players and fans from both sides know that his team was on something of a mission. I read all the articles and heard all the comments. People can change their mind and say whatever they want to say, but I understand that we were not wanted here by a lot of people. I, that's all. We're glad to be here. We're going to play awfully, awfully well. I don't know if we're good enough, but you mark it down. We are going to play well. The Irish spent a couple of meaningful hours at Dallas's Children's Medical Center as Lou Holtz and his players brought their smiles and some souvenirs for the youthful patients. But the key priority for Holtz and his team was preparation, something not to be taken lightly when the opponent is unbeaten and fourth-ranked Texas A&M. Let's flex! Great day to work, man. Great day. Once the strategy was all in place, it was just a matter of playing the waiting game until kickoff. After a warmer than expected week of weather in Dallas, game day dawned icy and cold with temperatures near 30 degrees. But the weather wasn't about to limit the enthusiasm of the Irish faithful after particularly intense demand for Notre Dame's allotment of 12,000 tickets. The Irish themselves, who have made a history of confronting unbeaten and top-ranked teams in bowl games, had yet another opportunity against the 12 and 0 Aggies. In its first possession, Notre Dame tried to set the tone as Meyer found tight end Irv Smith on only the third play of the game. A fumble stopped the Irish drive, and yardage wasn't coming easy for either the Irish or the Aggies. Both teams attempted to gain a feel for the pace of the game, and Rick Meyer did his best to steer the Irish away from trouble. More than anything, it was a matter of Notre Dame literally trying to keep its feet on the ground, as the icy field conditions made for treacherous going for the Irish backs. Fullback Jerome Bettis barely misfired on Notre Dame's only bit of razzle-dazzle for the afternoon, as his option pass to Lake Dawson nearly found its mark. The field conditions forced Bettis and tailback Reggie Brooks to change shoes. This change would later pay off for the Irish. But while the offense struggled, it was Notre Dame's maturing defense that set the tone with classic bell-ringing stops.
Defense dominated throughout the first half, and both teams were scoreless after 28 minutes of play. But Notre Dame polished off its two-minute offense after taking over at its own 36-yard line. On first down, Rick Meyer took advantage of great protection and finally zeroed in on Reggie Brooks for five yards. Second down, found Blake Dawson, the recipient of Meyer's quick out. Now just short of midfield, Reggie Brooks headed up the middle for 13 yards more. After an Irish timeout and a couple of incompletions, Notre Dame hit on the perfect call against Texas A&M's blitzing defense. A middle screen to Lake Dawson found the Aggie defenders headed aggressively up the field and Dawson with a relatively easy path to the end zone. Path to the near side, inside screen, Dawson, down to the 30, down to the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Irish! play was a middle screen and um, Texas A&M did a great job. They have a great defense of blitzing our offense and our offensive linemen did an excellent job. They escorted me into the end zone just the way the play was designed because uh, a lot of the defensive players on Texas A&M side were playing across our line of scrimmage. Therefore, we the middle screen worked perfect at that particular time and I just caught the ball from a well-thrown pass from Rick and just ran behind my offensive linemen and um, went in the paint and it was excellent feeling because momentum's always going our way and that was something cause that we needed right then and there. Dawson's TD, with 36 seconds in the half, proved the Aggie defense could be scored on. But for Lou Holtz, no lead is a comfortable lead, especially with an entire half to play. Texas A&M made things even more uncomfortable as the second half began. With the score at 7-0, the Aggies had plenty of fight left in them. But it wasn't long before Notre Dame's power up front took control. Thanks to the second effort running of Jerome Bettis and Reggie Brooks, the Irish embarked on what would turn into a 10-play drive. When Brooks wasn't gaining some of his 115 rushing yards, Notre Dame's quarterback was providing the tightrope work on third down. Meyer came ever so close to dropping a 55-yard bomb into the hands of Texan Michael Miller with only a last-second strip by Patrick Bates preventing another Irish touchdown pass. Then it was the ever-present Bettis and Brooks thunder and lightning combination that pushed Notre Dame toward pay dirt once more. When A&M ganged up on that pair inside, Meyer tested the ends with the option. On second and eight from the Aggie 26, Bettis pretended to block, then dashed for the goal line, where he hauled in a perfectly lofted throw from Meyer. Fake to Brooks, lob pass, Bettis, five, touchdown, Notre Dame! Jerome Bettis from Rick Meyer. With half the third period gone, the Irish now led 14-0. It turned out to be the last pass attempt of the day for Meyer, who needed only eight completions good for 119 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Notre Dame's running game had established a season-long reputation for dominance on its way to an average of 281 ground yards per game. But even the most optimistic of Irish fans might not have expected Notre Dame to put up 290 rushing yards against the Texas A&M defense. The Irish rolled over, around, and through the Aggie defense that had earned the nickname the Wrecking Crew.
In the third quarter, Texas A&M dodged a bullet when the Irish turned the ball over deep in Aggie territory. The Aggies had hopes of cutting into the two-touchdown deficit, but an ill-fated decision by rookie quarterback Corey Pulling to scramble only dashed the hopes of the A&M faithful. Emotional co-captain Demetrius DeBose recovered the ball at the Aggie 11 after tackle Brian Hamilton forced the fumble on Texas A&M's initial turnover of the game. The play culminated DeBose's second straight season as Notre Dame's leading tackler and closed the book on Hamilton's first year as a major contributor up front. Rick Meyer had designs on padding the Irish margin himself on the first play as he kept around left end and finished barely short of the goal line. As Notre Dame's defense lent some sideline support, the play displayed the challenge confronting the A&M defenders as they struggled to contain Bettis and Brooks and the offensive line and still deal with the Irish option capabilities. On first and goal from the one and a full house alignment, Bettis earned the call and ran behind Justin Hall and Irv Smith to add to the Notre Dame lead. First down and goal to go from the one foot line. Becton is in the game now at right half back for Notre Dame. Hand off to Jerome Bettis, touchdown! Patrick Bates' collision came a second too late to prevent the Irish from assuming a 21-0 advantage. For Bettis, it added to the performance chart of the junior fullback who turned out to be playing his final collegiate game. There weren't many smiles on the A&M sideline, but Notre Dame was well aware of the Aggies' comeback tendencies. On the first play of the fourth period, Corey Pulley hit Tony Harrison for 37 yards, the longest gain of the day for the Aggies. It was one of the few positives for an A&M offense that was held below 100 yards, both rushing and passing. From there, the Irish defense stiffened. Pulling eluded a flying Nick Smith, only long enough for Brian Hamilton and Devon McDonald to arrive. It continued to be a long afternoon for R.C. Slocum and a frustrating first bowl game for his youthful signal caller. Tony Venetulia's field goal from 41 yards got A&M on the board, but all that did was put the ball back in the hands of the Irish. And this time, they wouldn't let it go for nearly nine and a half minutes. <music> Driving in workmanlike fashion from its own 18, Notre Dame ran 16 straight running plays. Only three times did they need gains greater than five yards, and four times they converted on third down. The march personified a second half in which Notre Dame held the football for more than 22 of the 30 minutes. Bettis carried seven times, Meyer four times, Brooks three, and safety turned tailback Jeff Burris twice. And it was Bettis who put the finishing touches on this back-breaking possession as he marked the second straight bowl game in which he scored three touchdowns. Hand off to Bettis to the goal line, touchdown! His third touchdown of the game. Bettis from five yards out for the score. The six-for-six six philosophy of the burly back from Detroit gave the Irish reason to consider a celebration with only five minutes left in the contest.
Though Lou Holtz managed to evade a potential bath from Lindsey Knapp and Justin Hall, he couldn't miss the smiles on the Irish sideline. It was especially sweet for fifth-year veterans like Knapp, Hall, and Devon McDonald, who were part of their fourth January 1st victory in five seasons. As the seconds faded away, offensive MVP Rick Meyer put Notre Dame's seventh straight win in perspective. You know, they're a great defense, they're a great team, but, but I don't think they played any Notre Dames until today. The 